Welcome to the Pope on Film. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is where's your camera? Um, I. Great question. Can you can you see me? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Uh, it looks like I'm not seeing you for some reason. Which is weird, because, like, I can see my camera on the Zoom. Uh, blur my background, video settings. Is it something on, on my end? I don't know. I don't think so. It might have been an update to the fucking software. Uh, um, post disabled go. participant screen sharing. No, we got it. I got it. Okay, there you go. Hi, it's me. Yay! Yeah, just before the show, Zoom decided to update. Of course. And because of that, it had changed the settings. Huh. All right, then. Hi, it's me, Maylin. It's hot as heck. So I'm actually just wearing a see-through shirt with some stickers on my boobs. It's hot. Yeah. It's way too hot. Oh, uh, I am the Pope in question. Yeah. <laughs> My name is Reverend May Lynn. I'm the founder of the Church of Ed Wood. Yes, yes, the Little Lebowski Urban Achievers. I'm proud we are of all of that. It is episode 481, and I've got a, a number of things I want to talk about in the beginning. Number one, I want to talk a little bit about Project 2025. Oh, okay. Which should be on everybody's minds so, uh, right now. So a very, a very, very cheery, cheery topic. Yes. It, it This is very important, number one. And number two, okay, yeah, I will be talking about it for a, a bit of self-interest. But just hear me out here. Project 2025 is a sign that the Republicans have been emboldened by Donald Trump's previous regime. And Donald Trump is trying to backtrack and act like he's never heard of it before. Yes. Republicans are freaking out about it. And that's good because it really is horrible. And more people out there are, are sounding the warning bells over Project 2025. And a lot of people are discussing how damaging how massively damaging it will be but i saw a quote by someone on msnbc talking about project 2025 and about how it will affect all of us on a smaller scale yeah. that yes project 2025 the republicans new plan to basically install a dictatorship Yes, it's bad, but it and it will have major effects, but it'll also have minor ones too. And I saw this quote and I wanted to share it in the podcast. The Heritage Foundation has a plot to turn every government employee of any consequence into a personal appointee of Donald Trump. That means everybody yes. that you call in federal service, every single solitary person that you call is going to be one of Donald Trump's either appointees or working for one of his appointees, and that's really dangerous. Your government isn't going to work anymore. The federal government that you count on to get things done is going to be a bunch of hacks who were appointed just like back in the 1920s. And man, the 1920s were a difficult time because the president was a businessman, yeah. and he was elected. He was like, "Hey, I'm a newspaper magnate, and my name is uh, my name is a uh, 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 Warren Warren G Warren G Harding. He wrote, he wrote that rap song. Uh, 
yes. uh, regulate Warren G. He was a big rapper in the 90s. And he's like, hey, now that I'm president, I don't know what to do. So I'll just appoint a bunch of people that I know and they can do whatever they want. And so it was a real messed up time in politics. But yeah, uh, if Donald Trump does get into office and does put forth Project 2025, it sure is going to be like the, you know, the corrupt presidency of the 1920s. Man, if only there was someone out there who was warning people about that. Yeah. Educating them, as it were. Yes. About who the president was, what were some of his appointees, like who was the secretary of state? Did he do bad things? What were those bad things? Whoever that person is. Yeah. Is going to be a hero. Really proud of that. Mm -hmm. Secondly, last week we started off the show discussing things that have happened in the last nine and a half years that the Pope on Film podcast has existed. Um, how? Hey, let me let me clarify that. The Pope on Film started off our last episode discussing all of the things that happened in the last nine and a half years that 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 the pope on film has existed delighting yes. our tens of fans yes it was a good opening but um i've been thinking about it i want to talk about charles manson some more okay so here's the summary of the story that occurred in 2014 so uh, charles manson he was going to get married. He applied for a marriage license in prison because he met someone, pen pal, whatever. This, and this then... is still Jeff, right? We're still yes, doing... no, it's still totally Jeff. It's okay. still totally Jeff. But um, I've got a quick historic approximations to do right after Charles Manson. Okay. But okay, so Charles Manson said he wanted to marry. He met someone and he was in love. It turns out that the woman who wanted to marry Charles Manson only wanted to marry Charles Manson so that after Charles Manson dies, she would take possession of his corpse and tour him around the nation like a Elmer McCurdy-esque sideshow. Yes. And um, I made a joke about, oh, man, so the wedding was canceled and now Charles Manson won't get the fairy tale happily ever after that we've all wanted him to have. But it's like, I don't see that as being a bad thing. No, no, neither did I. Because I remember hearing the story, and at first it was just, there's this woman, she wants to marry Charles Manson. And it's like, all right, she's got to be another fucking lunatic. Yeah. And, then, and then after I heard what the actual plan was, as you so gracefully described, yeah. then I was like, all right, all right, cool. Exploit the motherfucker. Make some money. What the hell? I, I, I appreciate that somebody thought of it. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, if you're not going to put the man, if you're not going to give the man the death penalty, I think that turning his, desecrating his corpse for decades. Yeah is a sort of fitting punishment for the man. Yeah. Uh -huh. And also, really think about it, Bunny. How? Because yeah, when I thought about this, it was really shocking. How many people on your friends list would pay money to see Charles Manson's corpse? Oh, fuck yeah. There's a whole quiet cult of Manson. Holy shit. Like, I would say 40% of my friends list would be in line. To, to see Charles Manson's corpse, just period. And if it was on my way, I would stop in. Why yeah. not? Yeah. Okay. But now, but now, with, that but out with of the, the way, potential, but think of the potential where it just kind of starts where you go see the corpse, maybe a couple of other pieces of memorabilia, mm -hmm. and she makes money at this. It, it it could become a full blown amusement park, Manson Land. Manson Land. You know, you serial can... killersville. Yeah, you can you can go to uh, Clown uh, Town. What the fuck? You you can you can go to 
the Spawn Ranch section. Spawn Ranch! Spawn Ranch! And they can't exactly serve you acid, but there will be a lot of flashy lights and different colors to try to simulate it to help enhance your cult member experience. Spawn Ranch, and you were riding a horsey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love that movie. Um, so with that out of the way, we've discussed the Charles Manson, we've discussed Project 2025. Now we can start with our real introduction. And guess what, Bunny? It's a surprise hap! Do you got yes. the intro? Are we in there? Up? Are we going? Huh? Yes, 